Let's get started in talking about acid chlorides and acid anhydrides, and we'll start with acid chlorides. And it says here that acid chlorides are derivatives of carboxylic acids, and they have this general formula right here. So if you take a carboxylic acid, if we just draw a carboxylic acid here, if we simply replace the hydroxyl with a chlorine, we get what's called an acid chloride. And how do we name acid chlorides? Well, if you know how to name a carboxylic acid, naming an acid chloride isn't too much of a stretch. So there's a couple of things you need to know. You need to know how to name them using IUPAC rules and using common nomenclature as well. What you do if you're naming an acid chloride using IUPAC nomenclature, you would name the carboxylic acid, then you would replace oic acid with oil chloride. So say for example, if you had this molecule, let's just practice with something simple here. If we had this molecule, we, we would call this benzoic acid. And if we changed that hydroxyl for a chlorine, we would call this ben, benzoyl chloride. So benzoyl chloride. If we wanted to use common nomenclature, common nomenclature, we would replace ic acid with il chloride. So let's take a look at this example on the bottom left. It says here ethanoyl chloride and acetyl chloride. Well, if we think about this carboxylic acid, so the carboxylic acid analog of this compound, the IUPAC name would be ethan, ethanoic acid. And what did we do? We replaced oic acid with oil chloride. So that's where we get ethanoyl chloride. The common name for this carboxylic acid is acetic, acetic acid. And so what would we do in this case? We replace ic acid with il chloride. So we get acetyl chloride. Of course, when we're using common nomenclature, we use the Greek lettering for our substituents. So you can see that this molecule, if I look at the IUPAC name, it would be 1, 2, 3, bromopropanoyl chloride. But if I want to name that according to the common nomenclature system. In that case, I would call this carbon my alpha carbon, this carbon is my beta carbon, so it becomes beta bromopropionyl chloride. Some other interesting information about acid chlorides, it says that acid chlorides, let's practice drawing the generic structure of an acid chloride. It says that they are noxious, irritating chemicals requiring great care in handling. So if you open up a bottle with an acid chloride in it, you wanna make sure that you have good ventilation in that area. It also says that they are slightly polar, boiling near the corresponding carbonyl's temperature. And I told you that a carbonyl means mean the analogous aldehyde or ketone. Another interesting piece of information here is shown in this picture at the bottom right, which says that acid chlorides react violently with water. And in fact, this is a reaction showing some acetyl chlorides or acetyl chloride, however you want to pronounce it. It's showing acetyl chloride reacting with water. And the reaction is quite violent. You can see that there's some vapor being given off there and probably some heat. And then in the last point, it says that they are good acyl group transfer agents. Let me show you what that means. So if I just draw an acid chloride again, and we talked about this earlier, but I just want to refresh your memory that this whole functional group is called an acid chloride, but this part of the acid chloride here, this is called the acyl group, the acyl group or the acyl portion. And what we're gonna see is that acid chlorides are good at transferring their acyl portions onto other molecules. Next, we'll look at acid anhydrides, and you see that acid anhydrides have this general formula here, and you can probably guess that anhydride means without water. And you may have also figured out, well, what if I took two carboxylic acids and I added them together, so let's call this R1, we'll call this R2. If I added two carboxylic acids together and I lost water, I could form an acid anhydride, and that's true. It says here the molecule is actually two carboxylic acid molecules with a water molecule removed, and that's shown right here. Symmetrical anhydrides are those where both acyl groups are the same. And I'm gonna circle the two acyl groups. So if both of them are the same, like in this molecule here or in this molecule down here, we call those symmetrical anhydrides. And symmetrical anhydrides are named by replacing the acid ending 
of the acid with the word anhydride. And what that means is, let's say we have this carboxylic acid. So this would be ethanoic acid, ethanoic acid. All we do is we remove the word acid and we replace it with anhydride when we make the analogous anhydride. Of course, the IUPAC name for this carboxylic acid is acetic, acetic acid. And what would we do in this case? We would remove acid and we would call it acetic anhydride. The same thing applies for benzoic anhydride, which you can see is derived from two molecules of what? Of this carboxylic acid, which is benzoic acid. Again, if we were to take two carboxylic acids like is shown here, and if we were to heat them up enough to remove water, we would form, we would form an acid anhydride. But it says up here that acid anhydrides are not typically formed in a reaction between the parent carboxylic acids. And so basically what I'm saying is that this reaction can be done, but it's usually not very high yielding. There are better ways to make acid anhydrides. And a really good way to make an acid anhydride involves an acid chloride. And it says here that one reaction used to form acid anhydrides is the combination of an acid chloride so we take an acid chloride and we react it with what? A carboxylate anion. So let's draw a carboxylate anion. And that reaction is shown down here highlighted in green. Our book doesn't go into the details of how this reaction occurs, but I'll just kind of tell you that there is a significant dipole, of course, between the carbon and the oxygen because oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. So there is a partial positive charge on that carbon. And since there's a negative charge on the oxygen of the carboxylate, what happens is a pair of electrons from that carboxylate will actually come over and it will attack this carbon. And it actually contacts that carbon so hard that it will actually kick out that chlorine atom and it will leave as a chloride ion. And if you're really curious, you might be asking, well, how would I even make an acid chloride like acetyl chloride? And the answer is, you would take the carboxylic acid and you would treat it with SOCl2. And SOCl2, and SOCl2 is called thio, thionyl chloride. And you should have that memorized that you take a carboxylic acid, you treat it with thionyl chloride, and you make the corresponding acid chloride. And what are acid chlorides good for? They're good for reacting with carboxylates to form anhydrides. And the last reaction that you're responsible for with respect to anhydrides is this reaction here. It says that an acid anhydride can react with an alcohol to produce an ester, a carboxylic acid. And what it's saying here in the third point is that this is what we call an acyl group transfer reaction. Let me show you. So we have our alcohol over here and we have our acid anhydride. Now, if you think about this carbon here that I'm highlighting in orange, there's two dipoles, right? Pulling electron density away from that carbon because again, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. And the net result of those two dipoles is that this carbon is partially positive. So what happens is a lone pair of electrons from the alcohol actually attacks this carbon right, right there. And of course, carbon cannot have five bonds, so you have to break a bond at the same time. And so when you put all that together, what you end up forming is this bond, right? This arrow is representing a bond being formed between the carbonyl carbon and the oxygen of the alcohol, and we end up producing an ester. What we're left over with is a carboxylic acid, and that comes from this portion of the anhydride and this proton from the alcohol. And the whole concept of an acyl group transfer reaction, well, I told you that an acyl group was this portion of the molecule. And if you think about it, what's happening? You're transferring this acyl group. This acyl group is being transferred onto this part of our alcohol to produce this ester. This slide shows the exact same reaction we saw on the previous slide, except they don't show the carboxylic acid product. Let's take a look again. We have the two dipoles on this carbon, okay, and then we have a really strong partial positive on that carbon, and therefore a lone pair 
from the alcohol oxygen is going to form a bond with this carbon and then we're going to lose this bond like that. What's the net result? That we're forming a bond between the oxygen in the alcohol and the carbonyl carbon, right? This carbonyl carbon. And then the rest of the molecule, if you're like, where's the rest of the molecule go? Well, what I have in the two red circles forms the carboxylic acid. And I'm gonna draw it in here because they left it out. And where's the acyl group that was transferred? Here's my acyl group. And it was transferred onto this portion of my alcohol.